Greetings, travelers to the stars. My name is Mark, and this is Tomes of Awesome. I'm taking a temporary break from doing the black and white Resident Evil 2 game. I'll be getting back to that in another day or so shortly. I've been playing a lot of Binding of Isaac, however, and on this current playthrough, as you can see, I started playing the demon Azazel, but I have boosted him up to what can only be said true god level practically so i wanted to record this video if only to <clears throat> explain what items do what now for those who play binding of isaac <clears throat> that's a whole other story and uh the game theory channel <clears throat> by matt pat and stephanie pat actually do a way better video on describing that in fact they have a whole theory on it. i suggest you check it out I'll put that video's link in the description. However, <clears throat> starting with the My Stuff section, top left and then going left to right, and so on and so forth. The top left section, the first four items are all items that essentially increase either your health by permanently giving you an additional heart, or they increase attack power. The second from the right item here, the one with the pentagram, I actually got that in a devil contract deal. That in does indeed increase my attack power. The next item is called the meat cube. Now that doesn't really do much, but the funny thing is this is one of these add-ons to the game where if you get more than one meat cube, you don't get multiple meat cubes. The meat cubes start to get larger and larger and have a face and things. As soon as you get a second meat cube, it actually turns into the face of Super Meat Boy. A little bit of a reference there which is kind of cool the next two items the 666 and the upside down cross uh, aka the mark of the beast and I believe it's just unholy or whatever they both also increase attack power and I received them also from a devil uh, deal which means I had to sacrifice hearts in order to get them one of the interesting things that I myself didn't know about binding of Isaac at first is that of course you have your health right and it, which is up here and as soon as you run out of it you die end of discussion however these first two red hearts are just called hearts but these next ones here um, I think those are just what are referred to as black hearts. You get them when your sin goes up. But this last one that's lighter blue is called a soul heart. And that's one that you can pick up much more often. Now, the reason I mention this is because in Binding of Isaac, hearts and life isn't just what keeps you alive. It's also a currency. So starting with the satanic, including the satanic item, Mark of the Beast, Unholy, and the next symbol, which for those of you who are fans of the game Blood Rain, starring the wonderful voice actress Laura Bailey, you'll recognize that as an upside down version of her uh, Blood Rain symbol from the Brimstone Society. Now, I can't remember what that exactly is called, but what it does give you is the laser breath ability. And for those of you who play Binding of Isaac, what you know is that unfortunately Azazel only has a little very, very short range attack. What laser enhanced ability though, is it gives you this. Yeah. <clears throat> the next item to the right there is a, is a random fly. You can see him on my team here. He's a blue fly. Interestingly enough, in Binding of Isaac, fly color does indeed matter. Gray ones are neutral. Red are pissed off and angry at you. But anytime you see a blue fly, it instantly becomes your ally. Instantly. And will help you. Usually, uh, it's a one-hit suicide bomber. And as soon as it goes off, it damages the enemy and disappears. However, if you get one in a treasure room like I did there, then they will continue to come back. The next symbol to the right of the fly, by the way, those two little double semicircles on your side is supposed to represent the fly's wings. Um, that next thing is a piece of coal, and you get that from battling and defeating Krampus, who can be located in, I don't see one on this map, but anytime you see a room where, actually wait a second, I think there is one on this map, I will 
go to it to show you what the door looks like. Is it this one? Yes. Right here with the skull on it, you know? Or, wait. Is that or... No, it's this one here with the teeth. Now, if you can't fly, you will take half a heart of damage in and half a heart of damage out. If you can fly, however, you'll only take half a heart worth of damage flying back out. Later in the game, once you unlock him, Krampus will show up in this room. He unleashes a swarm of red particle damage orbs that fly out, of course, but he also does this maneuver, but as an up, down, left, and right cross attack. You can either get one of two items from him. You can either get the head of Krampus, which is a special item. Uh, my special item is the mirror ball. I'll talk about it in a second. Which is a chargeable attack that does the up, down, left, right cross attack. Or you can get this item. Now, this item, the piece of coal... It actually says uh, it was your Christmas present because Binding of Isaac is very depressing that way. Um, I'm pretty sure it increases your attack power, but for whatever reason, it also turns your breath attacks black. Or, depending on your lighting, possibly more chocolatey colored, but I think it's supposed to be black. Finally, on the right there is the mirror ball, which is up here. Um, there are many items in this game that can charge that. As it charges, it'll slowly turn green. And what that does is it it says it will tell you your future. Now, I've used it to get many cards. And playing cards, as you know... Nope, I don't have a sprawling room available. Playing cards, as you know, have all different sorts of things. It can give you different abilities. But I've also gotten both black and soul hearts from this mirror ball as well, which has been just absolutely unbelievable. Also, by the way, there's the meat ball, the meat cube floating around me. If I get a second one, he'll actually get the face of Super Meat Boy from the limited game thing there. Jumping down to the final row on the left, the Cat of Nine Tails is like being whipped. It inflicts damage, which in turn causes you to cry or whatever, which ultimately in turn increases uh, the damage of your tears. The next item is called a box of cards. I bought that in a shop. Shops can be located... Uh, there we go, I'm going to bring it up. Uh, the bottom rightmost room on the map there, as you can see, is a coin. Anytime you see that, that is essentially a shop where you can spend your coins to purchase items. That is how I got the box of cards. The box of cards actually allows me to hold more than one card at a time. It allows you to hold up to two. I haven't figured out how to switch them yet, so I think you have to use one and then the other. But either way, normally you can only hold one card. This allows you to hold two. It's really, really useful. The other thing I managed to buy from the shop, as you can see on the far right, is this compass image that looks straight out of The Legend of Zelda. In fact, so does the map layout, which is kind of neat because the game itself is a very much Zelda-esque map, if you will. What the compass does, it does not give you the full map, no. But all these rooms that you can see on the map right here, with the exception of the question mark, that doesn't show. Um, all the symbol rooms, it shows up immediately as soon as you enter a new floor. However, when you walk by a room that actually has a secret room to it, like right here, then it will show up the question mark telling you which walls you can bomb to find secrets and which ones are a waste of your time. It costs 15 gold as usually the higher end items usually do, but it's definitely worth it. The third item on the bottom row here, uh, sorry, fourth item on the bottom, third from the, from the right, is the screw. Now, if I didn't have these cultist hoods on, you'd actually see a screw driven into the back of my head, which causes pain and thus tears up, meaning you fire faster. Um, the cultist robes, I don't know if I covered them or not, was another devil deal. It increases my attack power and it says classic cultist robes. Personally, I think it looks really cool with this. Um, then the final two items, one is Explosive Thoughts, and that is this green 
pulsing brain like item whenever enemies are in the screen it will fly off in the direction of them stop if it misses and then come back to you anytime it hits an enemy it explodes there is a cooldown down timer that doesn't show up but then after a while it will respawn the last and final thing i got in a treasure room which treasure rooms are always this icon right here. Don't pick up, don't look at the star because that just means I grabbed one and left the other item. But this little golden crown thing, that indicates the treasure room. There's one on every map, on every floor I should say, that gives you an item. This gave me the little boo buddy and he will fly into enemies, float through them. It says he haunts enemies, but what it essentially does is he poisons them over and over again causing them to take damage until they are destroyed he is a ghost and cannot be defeated and if by some mysterious circumstance he was he would eventually come back just like the explosive thoughts because unlike items that you might pick up to give you a temporary bonus anything you get in the treasure room is permanent now that being said I also have this heart over here which is a temporary thing you can when you get a new one it swaps out and stuff like that this one says it seeks it seeks its brothers so if you're going for red hearts um, it will actually attract red heart pieces to you. that being said let me show you how this build plays out I'm not that good I openly admit just saying that may be the fastest I've ever killed mom in that game in in this game ever. Also, that injection said something and attack speed up. Because I managed to defeat the boss without taking any damage whatsoever, this door has opened. These doors always offer a devil contract. Ooh, yes. Okay, <clears throat> this one here. The what looks to be floating torso without head or legs. If you get him, he will float around you like my brain, like my blue fly, uh, dangerous thoughts, and boo, and he will leave a trail of blood behind. The difference is that that blood is poisonous, and enemies that walk across it will take damage. However, what we really want is this guy, the dark bum. He wants to take your life. Now, here's the funny thing. Any time you have him on your party and you manage to get a red heart, if you, you, if you can, you can pick it up. But if you don't pick it up, he will eat it and he will drop you off another soul heart. If he picks up two hearts before he comes back to you, he'll drop a dark heart. Just for the record. I'm going to get this, the headless baby, as you can see, just like I said. It does a thing. However, my hearts now are both black and not red, and so I can't grab the third item. Oh, grabbed the Parva thing. Oops. Oh, I did get that. Now, that white half a heart will expand as soon as you go to the next floor into a full red heart, which I'm going up to now. I'm now currently in the first level of the womb. As you can see, the, the white heart regenerated, became whole, and gave me a full new heart. As you can also see here, there, yeah. The compass in full effect has shown all the symbol rooms, the white square being where I am, and these represent the four doors we can go, but doesn't show the map in general yet. It will, however, as we unfill, as we fill it out. So for 15 gold, I know it's a more expensive item, but sometimes in the shop you get good items, sometimes they're just a load of crap and a waste of time. The compass is definitely worth it. Also at this point, I can literally do that. I'm gonna grab the key. He's gonna grab that. No, okay, it's not enough yet, all right. I'm going to go to this, the cross swords and the sword symbol up here mean this is a combat room. If you have a key to take this off, we're going to have to deal with multiple bosses here. Oh, as you can see, little dead bum excreted me a soul heart here. Yeah, the challenge rooms usually have a total of three things. 
whether they're all mini bosses like these guys were, or just a group of enemies all put together, it varies. However, since I'm second floor from beating this entire playthrough run, they're all bosses. Figured I'd go through these things with you. Just for no other reason than I actually have a playthrough of my own attempt here. Okay, got a bomb. Uh, Bob's Ron Head Reusable Range Bomb. Okay, this is pretty good. You press uh, L2 to bring it up and then push a direction and he throws it. However, screw that. I want the unlimited card generator. It has served me so damn well so far, and I really have nothing to complain about thusly, so let it be. Oop. Oh, there we go. Thank you, dead bum. Once again, you I think I had to give like two heart two red hearts to get him, but at the same time, for the rest of your entire run until you die. He will continue to give you armored soul hearts every single time you kill an enemy and get what would normally restore your health. It's truly an unbeatable combination because you're going to take a lot of damage in this game. You really are. I'm going to use the mirror ball here. Ooh, and it gave me another soul heart. You can hold a total of up to 12 hearts in this game of any type combined all together. Because they don't want to make it too easy. Plus... Oh, oh. No? Okay. Plus, as you get on later on in this, like this level and stuff, little damage is going to start taking full hearts instead of half hearts. Also, as you can see now, bringing this up, because we op we walked through here, it now shows a question mark. So I'm gonna bomb. Wrong type of bomb. I'm gonna bomb here and. Ta da! Secret passage. Ooh, got some extra keys. You always wanna bomb if possible, these guys. Sometimes it's spiders, but a lot of times it's extra gold and stuff. Very useful. Oh no, yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Went through here. Wow, I literally just swept that entire room in a matter of seconds. I have never done that in the entire history of my time playing Binding of Isaac. Just saying, this build has been absolutely amazing. If you would like to play this build, or at least this map design layout, please take a look at D1YE3DKR. Now here's the thing though, that I have learned. If you type this code in, it will give you the same series of maps with treasures that I got, but it will, unfortunately, since it's technically considered cheating, you'll see a trophy with a circle and a line through it go across. This means that you can't unlock anything while doing it. You can only play it for your own fun, which sometimes is necessary because it helps you to get better at the game by restudying the levels. Also, please note that I played this as a Zazel who can fly by definition from the beginning. So if you play this as regular Isaac, you might not be able to get everything that I got because you can't reach certain areas. Just throwing it out there. Hmm, see what Mother has to offer. Me and Mother have kind of a love-hate relationship. She wants to kill me to prove that she's loyal to God from watching way too much TV, but as Game Theory pointed out, this whole story is literally just Isaac drawing crayon images in, in his head. Also, that cricket, dead cricket, seeing something like that makes people, especially kids, sad. So his tears are up, which in this game means his damage is up. And that chest was completely worthless, and it made both of my cards disappear. That sucks. Fortunately, however, I can respawn another card very quickly, and thanks for the soul heart, buddy. I imagine uh, the little dead bum dude is kind of like uh, 
He's kind of like Butters slash Captain Chaos from uh, South Park. Ah. He, uh, he tries to be all bad and everything, but he's actually pretty innocent. In fact, in South Park, Butters might actually ironically be like the one Christian character, despite the fact that he likes to dress up and pretend to be Captain Chaos. It's kind of a weird dynamic when you think about it. All right, going in for the boss fight. And we are against the Fawn. Now, he will break into multiple parts as we do damage. Mm. This is not gonna last. Ooh, okay, first off. Okay. Oh yeah, extra soul heart. What's this? Reusable item generator. What's that mean? Oh, it gets me heart. It gets me hearts. No, I still like my cards. I really do. All right, I'm going up to the final floor here. This is where Mother is. Quite literally, Mother's heart. By the way, defeating this will not only unlock Eden, it will give you an Eden coin. Eden <clears throat> allows you to play as Isaac, but you start with a bunch of with like one or two random items, and you always get wild hairstyles. But you can only do it when you have an Eden coin, and you get an Eden coin by defeating Mother's Heart. So, I'm just putting this out there. I'm going to wait and hopefully see if I can get some more hearts before I try the challenge room. Just because even though I'm overpowered, I was a Boy Scout. And Boy Scout motto says, be prepared. So, I intend to do just that. Although, if you wait too long, they shut. So, let's give it a shot. you find enlightenment joker not sure what the other one said i don't and i don't know how to switch no i don't know how to switch between the cards at the moment <laughs> he wants hearts he'd probably give me something really good for it too unfortunately i don't have enough that i can just hand out but normally every time you give this guy so many coins or whatever he's asking for uh, he starts giving you better and better items until eventually he gives you something really good and then vanishes. Like this. HP up. Nice. Now, I'll give him some hearts. Reusable pill generator. I would say that that was not worth it. Open your eyes and see. Yes, I'll open my eyes. Okay. And I'm going to take that back. Because honestly, it's just so entirely different. Oh no, it took a heart damage. Okay, we're going to have to be careful. Okay, he crapped out a spider that tried to attack me. That's not as good, dude. <laughs> now he wants keys. What will you give me in exchange for these keys? Wow, he needs a lot of keys. Ironically, I grab this, hand it to him again, because I gotta assume he give me a chest that requires a key. That's just ironic in every single way. May your rage bring you power, okay? There's something 
What? It calls out to its brothers. There's something inside it. Lucky rock. I take the bombs. I take the coin. I'm gonna take that and once again Joker because you never know what Joker's gonna do. That's the thing. It can do anything. It literally has the name of blood. It's wild. Bomb. Alright, let's use the Joker. Where's it gonna take us? Ooh. Now what happens if we skip the final level, huh? What happens then? I'm I'm very curious about that, but I don't want to do it, especially not when I'm streaming, because I want to show you uh, the st strategies of the final boss here. All right. Let's not do that ever again, shall we? Oh, thank goodness. Otherwise, that I literally would have been screwed and that would have killed me. Okay. And sometimes you get all that way and something stupid happens and it gets you killed. All right, if you like this video, please click like, subscribe, click the bell notifications to get notified when I upload videos, and do the Macarena, because maybe it'll help. Don't know what they might add to the YouTube algorithm next, but anyway, I will see you guys later. Ciao!